So this is my view today while I am filming. I have things everywhere. I have a heater going because I'm in the trailer because Damien's awake. I have Harley with me and there was just no way I could film in the house while Damien's awake. So this is what I got going on today and I'm sorry if it's loud from the cars but it's Sunday and I'm filming this right near the roadway. Look out Harley. Come on. Lay down. Good boy. Good boy. Ow, ow, ow! Hey everyone, today I am here to talk to you about what we do when Michaela is sick to keep her out of the hospital. As some of you may know, in the past when Michaela gets sick, it's usually very, very bad. Um, she gets a cold and then it transitions into pneumonia and then we end up in the hospital. So in order to prevent that when she is sick, I have 10 different things that we do to keep her out of the hospital. Um, these are just tips and tricks that I've learned from the hospital over the years um, and I've kind of compiled it all into my prevention. Um, this may not work for your child, but this is what works for Michaela. Well, so I'm just gonna get into it. Number one is I start her chest physiotherapy when we know someone is sick in the house. If someone is sick in the house, we know for sure Michaela is gonna get it. So I start her chest physiotherapy before she even gets sick because it's a prevention tool. So I have a whole video on chest physiotherapy. That's when I pat on her um, chest and you've seen that in a couple of videos that people have asked. So I'll have that video linked right here um, in order for you to watch that. My second step when I know she is starting to get sick is to check her lungs. Um, when I know she's not sick, she doesn't sound bad, um, and I can tell without using the stethoscope um, whether she's sick or not. But when I do know she's sick, I will get out my stethoscope and I'll listen to her chest to make sure that all her lung compartments are sounding clear. And basically, if she's not, then I know where to concentrate my chest physio, um, where she needs it most, and that type of thing. So number two on my list is stethoscope. Number three is if she is sounding bad, before I start her chest physio, I will usually give her her puffers. So these kind of look a little bit different than what you would think a puffer looks like. This is just the cylinder that actually goes into the plastic um, thing that you normally put in your mouth. But because Michaela can't control her breathing or control what she's doing, we use her aero chamber mask. So basically, we have two different puffers. One is Flovent, and when she's sick, she gets two puffs of this. And then we have her Ventolin, and she can get up to four puffs of this every four hours. This you give twice a day. What we do is you can stick your little chamber or your little cylinder into here, and you push this up against her face. And when she takes a breath out, you know she's going to be taking a breath in right afterwards. So then you're able to push this and it'll expurse the uh, medicine into her mouth. With this, you just shake it up in, in between each dose. So number four on my list is oximetry. So this is an oxygen monitor that I have bought offline, I believe Amazon or eBay. It was like $15. It's a lifesaver when Michaela is sick because I know exactly what she her saturation is for her oxygen levels as well as her heart rate. So as some of you may know, uh, the Ventolin raises your heart rate, so you need to keep an eye on that when you're giving Ventolin. So this helps a lot with that, as well her oxygen, to know exactly what she's setting at, if she needs extra oxygen, or um, if she's setting okay. So normally, the hospital would like you to be anywhere from 92 and above. And for Michaela, she's allowed to be under that. Um, we have uh, discussed as a team what we think her rate should be or what her saturation should be um, so we're allowed to leave a little bit of leeway for that but when she is sick I like to have her at 95 and above just because it helps her um, recover quicker this just tells me whether 
or not I need to up her oxygen. Number five on the list is to actually raise her oxygen. So we normally use the tanks and I've gotten questions about this in past videos as well. Why do we use the tanks over the concentrator? And that's mainly because the hydro in Ontario, Canada is ridiculous. So we rather have tanks that are free, use up those than to use a concentrator and pay for hydro. So when she's sick, however, though, these do not last very long when you up the rate. So normally Michaela is on 0.5 and that's mainly just to dry out her saliva. But when she's sick, we can go anywhere up to four liters per minute. So we actually switch her from the tanks to the concentrator just because you run out quicker. With the concentrator, however, if you do go up to four liters per minute, you then need to switch to the face mask. Um, and by that time, you're usually headed to a hospital anyways. So luckily, this time that just passed when she was sick, we only had to go up to two to two and a half liters per minute. So number six on my list is check her temperature. And this <laughs> thermometer has been in our family for quite a few years. My mom used it on us and the battery is still working from when we were babies. So I basically just check her temperature to see if she's has a temperature or not. And if so, um, we know we need to treat it. Um, but for the most part, if she doesn't have a horrible infection, um, she doesn't have a temperature. But I know as soon as she has a temperature, she usually has a chest infection. To go along with that, my number seven is to give her Tylenol if she does have a temperature. Um, to get that temperature down to normal, 98.6 or 36, I believe, in Celsius. Um, but yeah, so give her Tylenol as soon as you know she has a temperature and that will help bring it down. Number eight on my list is to actually switch out her formula. So when Michaela is sick, to give her formula, we risk the chance of aspiration pneumonia. Um, that is something we don't want and that's something that definitely puts us in the hospital. So we take her formula, which is the Nurture Junior with fiber, and we switch that out completely. So when she's sick, she doesn't get this. And what we give her is Pedialyte. So this basically just restores electrolytes and just keeps her hydrated basically. I think all that's in this is sodium, potassium, and chloride. So this is actually a tip that we learned from our local hospital that we're in with. Um, they do this. Sick Kids, I don't believe, does this. She just gets an IV right away and they hydrate her that way but my local hospital actually gives her this. So I like this option a lot better because we can do it at home and she can stay hydrated. We switch out um, the same amount we give her in this, we switch out for the same amount in this. And then the next thing that kind of ties in along with that is to give her extra water to make sure that she's hydrated. We like to give her extra water but not too much because then again, you don't want her so wet that her chest becomes full of fluids. So we usually give her probably one cylinder extra throughout the day um, just to help with hydration. Number nine on the list is to actually lower her feed rate. So normally Michaela runs at 240 mils per hour for her feed and it usually takes about an hour and 15 minutes to run her feed. Now when she's sick, you don't wanna be pumping fluids into her so quickly that she can't handle it or tolerate it. So what we do is usually lower her by half. So she'll go anywhere from 100 mils an hour to 125 mils an hour. Um, and that just helps with the aspiration pneumonia again and keeps her hydrated throughout the day. Um, and then as she's getting better, gradually increase her feeds as well as her rate. And number 10 on the list is finally call the doctor and get a prescription. So with our hospital, we are in what's called the complex care clinic. Clinic. So that means we are actually allowed to have a prescription on hand at all times at our pharmacy. So basically I just have to call the pharmacy and they will fill it for me and then I contact my doctor and let her know that we filled it. So normally Michaela goes on Cefprazil and it is 250 milligrams per five mils 
and she gets six mil twice a day. This is usually later on the list because I start all these things as prevention, and then when she does get the chest infection, that's when we give her the prescription. But if I feel that she's doing well and she doesn't need the extra help of an antibiotic, then I won't call. But for the most part, she ends up going to an antibiotic. And now I have an extra step as a bonus step that you're able to do, but it's optional. Um, we've never done this in the past. We've only actually done it once, and I don't think I would do it again. And that is to give her probiotic drops. Now, my, my pediatrician in the complex care clinic recommended this to give her when she's sick, just to help with um, prevention of any other sickness while she's sick so that it doesn't continue on too long but the problem is with this this little tiny bottle is $35 and for something that we don't think it would um, benefit Michaela a lot we don't think we would do this again this only lasts um, so long too you have to be very careful when you're um, administrating it because you can't touch the bottle to anything because you don't want to contaminate it um, and for $35 honestly we don't think it did anything for Michaela just because we know when someone gets a cold in our house it's because we gotten sick and that's why it's not because Michaela's out and about all the time catching things so don't think we would do this again but we've done it once and uh, haven't done it again. So that is my prevention tips to help keep Michaela out of the hospital. Um, if you have any questions about any of these items, please let me know and I will be sure to answer them in the comments below or in a video. And if you have any tips or tricks of when your kids are sick, what you guys do, please leave them in the comments below for everyone to see them. And I think that's all for today. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.